Welcome back, Shalliners. Well, there is some drama out of the Kardashian camp, when is there not, about Kim and her divorce from Kanye West. Now, everything's apparently been settled, but Kanye, according to page six, is not content with amicably co-parenting or even trying to be friends with Kim in some way. This boy has allegedly changed his phone number and told Kim, you can contact me through my security. Oh my God, what did we expect from Kanye? Did we really think he was going to go gentle into that good night? I didn't. I think a lot of us saw this coming in like some form or another, that he had some sort of petty trick up his sleeve. And can't we relate to that? Today, we're gonna break down what's going on with Kim and Kanye, and also talk about what we can learn from this. What to do if you're dealing with an ex that's giving you problems. Maybe they're being petty, airing your dirty laundry on social media, trying to turn people against you. What do you do when you are so ready to move on, but they just keep peck, peck, pecking? Do you engage? Do you ignore them? Do you confront them? I've got some tips that are really gonna help, some exercises you can do to kind of like figure out what to do should things get worse. We're gonna break it all down. But first, just wanna remind you guys to join me on Instagram at ShallonXO. Also, follow me on Flays. It's our uncensored ad-free platform. I've got a video up right now about what's going on with my ex, well, several exes. <laughs> also, speaking of evil things, pick up one of my new sweatshirts. Actually, this is not a new design. This is one of our old school designs, but I love this merch. I love these designs. Enjoy them, destroy them. Uh, head on over to the link in the bio to shop my merch. We've got a whole bunch of really cool designs. Also pick up our new book club selection, Essentialism. It's a fantastic read, really quick and easy, but just about how to set boundaries, how to streamline your life and get smarter. Now, before we get into Kim and Kanye, I wanna to talk to you guys about Meghan Markle. People have a lot to say about my video on Meghan where I basically called her, I mean, you know, I don't believe her. I don't believe her victim narrative. I, there's just so many inconsistencies, the things that she says. And I wanna, you know, I wanna talk about this. I wanna talk about why I go so hard on Meghan. I am here to make you guys smarter to pray proof you so that you are not moving through life as an easy fucking target for really bad people, right? And liars are bad people. Self-aggrandizers are bad people. Victims, because victims become bullies, we know this, are bad people. And if you are moving through the world saying, oh, because this person has the same skin color, the same socioeconomic background, the same gender, the same sexual preference, the same hair color, whatever, I believe you. That's not a wise way to behave. If Megan wasn't black, she's half black, would you believe the thing she's saying? Would you believe that someone who lived in Canada, where the queen is on the money, on the bills, doesn't understand anything about the British monarchy? Huh. Would you believe her that she claims that the palace took away her passport when she was dating Harry, and yet somehow she went on 13 trips abroad, personal trips, not with the family, personal trips that year? Have you ever been to the airport and forgotten your passport? And they're like, we just asked, but like, we really don't care. Do you believe that happened 13 times to her? I don't, and I don't believe it because it's illogical, because it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that a woman who is as smart and eloquent as Meghan doesn't know anything about the British monarchy. That she's posted pictures on her blog of Kate Middleton and Harry was standing right next to her and she claims she never knew who Harry was. Hmm. I don't not believe her because she's half black. I don't believe her because it doesn't make sense. And if you, again, are moving through the world believing anyone who happens to look like you, they, they are preying on your experience as a black woman, as a female, as someone with sexual trauma, as someone with green eyes, whatever it might be. They know that. Dangerous people know what buttons to push. They know what cards to play. And I am trying to make you bulletproof to those kinds of people. I'm trying to make you smarter because I've been victims of it. You probably have too. And that might be why you're so mad at me and gassed up on my channel. Dude, I'd be mad too. If I was moving through life like a little rabbit and I wandered into a den of wolves, which is what the world is full of, I'd be pretty pissed too. I'm trying to turn you into a wolf. You're at Wolf University right here. And if you don't like it, and if you don't wanna be a wolf, just bunny hop your way out. That's fine. But do not come to the wolves and say you should be less wolf-like. No, baby girl, you need to be more like us. We're trying to help you. 
But let's talk Kim and Kanye. <sighs> this petty fuck. Poor Kim. Poor Kim. You know, I think she just put up with so much for so long because she did love Kanye, loved their family. She was trying to make it work. I know for her kids, they're her, the center of her life. And I just, who can blame her for reaching her breaking point, right? So this is what page six is saying. Oh my God. The rapper changed his phone numbers and told her she could only contact him through his security. But despite the animosity, the source added that the pair are continuing to co-parent their children and Kanye regularly visits them at the home while Kim is out. A source said, even before Kim filed for divorce, Kanye changed his numbers and said, you can contact me through security. Can you imagine your husband changing his phone number on you? You just, you call him, it's like, bee bop boop. The number you have dialed is no longer in service. You're like, what? And suddenly you're talking through bodyguards that you're probably paying. It's like, oh, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think I've fallen through the fucking looking glass. What is going on here? It gets better. Despite this, she trusts him around the kids. He loves them and is seeing a lot of them. She leaves the house and he arrives and hangs out with the kids. They have an army of nannies, so the transition is easy. I don't care if you have an actual army, if you have like the National Guard called in to deal with your ex. The disrespect, but we're, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk, we're talk more about this. Plus a source added, division of their finances in the divorce was easy because of the prenup. It was an easy case of you keep your money and I'll keep mine. I think it's pretty obvious Kim is kind of like the cash cow here. You know, like I said, I don't know anyone who buys Yeezy. I mean, may, I, it was sold to Adidas. I think Adidas. So, okay, fine. But Kim has like, come on. Like she's her own personal empire. And I want, I just can't help but wonder if the whole reason Kanye is doing this petty bullshit of changing my number, talk to my people, your people can call my people, is because he didn't get to go to war because they had a prenup, right? Now, Prenups are not ironclad. There's actually been, there's never been an unbreachable prenup. Like if you try hard enough, you can breach a prenup. If you got enough lawyers, enough money, enough time, you can do it. It's like any wall. Just give people enough time, they'll chip away at it. So I wonder if this was like his way of getting to her because he couldn't attack her money. He's not gonna attack the kids or he couldn't or whatever. So he's like, I'm gonna find something to just, to twist the knife over. And again, haven't we all dealt with this kind of person? Something I go back to that's taught me so much about life and love and relationships is, you might be surprised to know, Jurassic Park. Not a lot of life lessons come from dinosaurs and movies about dinosaurs eating people, but for me they do, because I look for lessons everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. In Jurassic Park, like the original one, they're talking about how smart velociraptors are and how they learn to test for weak spots in the electric fence and like ram it and try to get through. And I, like that just stuck with me for so long. I'm like, if an animal with a brain the size of a walnut can understand how to test a thing, a person, whatever, for weak spots to gain an advantage, don't you think people can do that? Again, haven't we personally experienced this? So how does this relate to Kanye? And how does this certainly relate to people in our lives? Because when we are living right, when we're whole and we're determined and we're moving forward, we're getting out of a relationship and we're moving on, our exes will turn into that fucking velociraptor, right? And they will test, 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 test to see your weak spots. We see toddlers doing this, right? Toddlers will try, try, try. My dog does it. He is a little velociraptor. His brain's the size of a lemon, so he's got something on those raptors. <laughs> but he's he is like manipulative, you know? Every creature on earth is, and people are going to push you as far as you let them. That's human nature. And again, I want us to be insulated against stuff like this and forewarned is forearmed. If we go through life assuming that everyone's choosing kindness and everyone's telling the truth, you know what? I hope so. And we're gonna like maybe trust people until they give us a reason not to. Actually, you know what? No, I take that back. I take that back. You know, this like circles back to Megan. It's like, just because your ex does not mean you get the benefit of unconditional love, unconditional trust, and the benefit of the doubt all the time. I don't care if that ex is, you're my mom, you're my grandmother. Well, my mom I love unconditionally, of course. But my mom's amazing. And if my mom was like sleeping with my boyfriends and draining my bank account, I'd be like, I'm sorry, we, I can't be in your life, right? We cannot 
operate under this umbrella of anything goes because you check this particular box. You're going to get conned, baby girl. You're going to get used, abused, and no wonder you're angry in the comments, right? So let's get smarter. But let's talk about Kim and Kanye, you know? But let's talk about what to do when this is our ex, when we have a velociraptor ex-boyfriend. I have dealt with this. I've dealt with this more recently than I would have liked to, where I was ready to move on and my ex was not. And he was going to try a, just an absolute shotgun blast, just a pellet, boo, a huge buckshot cloud of anything he could to get my attention. And I could almost predict what was coming. I mean, he started with like things that I considered extremely terrorizing and frightening. A million calls, just, just things that I don't do to people that I found, like I said, terrorizing. You know, and some people, it was no big deal. My guy friends were like, it's fine, whatever. And I'm like, you're not a woman though. Like you don't understand that like, this isn't an isolated thing. And for you, it have a conversation, it might go bad go bad to a guy is someone might cry oh i don't want to cry to a woman a conversation with an ex that goes bad is he cuts my dog's throat in front of me he stabs me to death and then shoots himself on my lawn like bad is a whole other level right but i became very aware very quickly that this person was going to keep throwing rocks and my electric fence to see where my weak spots are so you know what i did <sighs> something very icky, something very stressful, something I didn't want to do. I made a mind map. I made almost like a war-like flow chart, right? You ever take those quizzes in like Seventeen Magazine and it's like, who should I ask to prom? And then it's like you move down and you, you move over and it's this little like flow map thing. I did that with battle and harassment. I sat down and I made a list of everything I could think of that he would try from driving by my house to sending me a hateful text messages to calling me a thousand times in a day to coming at me from an emotional i just need closure and, uh, to i'm gonna start spreading rumors about you online everything i could think of and to inhabit that emotional space to really think about what that would be like if someone i loved like this is a long time ago but i did i loved him would be capable of that it was painful I didn't want to look at it and it was frightening. I didn't even want to imagine how it would feel, what it would mean if suddenly he was posting sexy photos that I sent him online. Now, you know, I've never sent a nude, but still like we want to be in control of our own narrative. I don't want him posting fuck a sexy picture. I'm fine with a sexy picture. Don't post like, uh, like if I've got a double chin and I'm like sitting on the couch, don't post that picture. You know, I'd rather you post a nude. Those are fantastic. I know my angles, <laughs> but like, I didn't even want to think about these things. And a lot of times when people attack us, and I use attack as like a very broad term, like, you know, they could just be bothering us. They could just be like, oh, like a thorn in our side. And we're like, I just, I'm so ready to be done with this. Please leave me alone. We don't want to think about what, what it might be. It's like, we just want to tune it out, but denial can be deadly, right? It can be deadly to our peace, our self-esteem. It can be just plain actually deadly. You watch Dateline and you hear women being like, he's not that bad. They're in denial and their friends, everyone around them was like, ah, this is such a dangerous situation that you're in. Come on, girl. So I want us to avoid that. And in order to avoid it, we got to take a real good look at what might happen. So I want you to have a war afternoon. Get a glass of wine, get some friends. Friends are great because they, they can maybe see the forest for the trees. They can see the entirety of an electric fence and be like, girl, I know your weak spot. He's gonna come at you saying he misses your mom, he misses coming over on Sunday for a barbecue and potato salad. You know that's your weak spot because you loved having him as part of the family. Write that down. What are we gonna do if he does that? So we're gonna make an exhaustive list of possible things this person either could do based on their previous behavior, because look, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior, isn't it? So we're gonna make a list of either things he's been known to do that could be in his emotional wheelhouse, threats, violence, put downs, weird shit online, right? And then we're going to make a system. We are going to come up with a plan of action if he does 
A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, all the way down the line. Now, let me tell you, taking it back to the queen and the royal family, the royal family's motto is don't react, don't explain. And I'm like, ugh, amazing. And you know what? That always sounds easy when it's not you, right? To not react, to not get mad, to say nothing, to just keep rolling on. There is nothing harder in this world than non-reaction. Nothing is more difficult than restraint. Someone cuts you off in traffic, someone flips you off. Are you like, it's cool, I got this. You're like, Bruh! you just like wanna follow them off the freeway to Arby's and be like, why did you do that, right? We are emotional, hot-headed animals. We are animals, but we're the smartest animal. We have the power of thought. We have the foresight of consequences where it's like dogs don't, koalas don't. They just like, man, they just react. They shoot first, ask questions later. We don't behave that way. So 99% of the time, your reaction to all of these things he might pull is nothing. Ugh, Shallon, don't tell me that he's bothering me. I know that, I know, I know that, I know that. Believe me, I've been there. I'm not saying this is easy, but you're playing the long game. Shalligators, alpha females, we play the long con. We're not reactive in the moment all the time. Sometimes, if it warrants it, if that's part of your mind map, okay, okay. If that's part of your war flow chart, all right. But you gotta decide that first, because then if you're like, no, 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 they crossed this line. They said they're gonna come and kill me. We don't stand for that shit. I wrote down on my mind map four weeks ago that if they do that, I call the police. Now you're not reacting in a hot-headed way. You're executing a plan. And when we feel like we have a plan, you know how we feel? Powerful. We don't feel like we're being victimized. We don't feel like we're in this constant state of anxiety. What's he gonna do today? What's he gonna say now? What, what is the next fucking thing around the corner with this guy? We know. We at least have an idea of what might happen. And if he comes out of left field with something, we're like, okay, okay. What's, okay, he changed his phone number. I can only contact him through his security or his mama or whoever. Didn't expect that, but all right. That most closely aligns with mm, item number L. Okay, so what was our edict about that? Okay, maybe we can slot that in. Maybe that's the course of action we take. We at least have some framework for how to behave when people come against us. And again, that stops us from feeling like victims, right? I know what to do now. It's like if you take a jujitsu class, you're less afraid to walk down the street at night. It's like, hey, no, 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 I've got my own set of behaviors that I'm ready to deploy, okay? So you can try it, but now I know what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna be in this fight or flight freeze response. I am going to be able to act dispassionately, neutrally, and with confidence that I thought about this in a neutral time. In a neutral time, wait a minute, what? This is the crucial part. The reason I said, I want you to have a war afternoon, a war eating, get the wine, get the friends, get the whatever, is because the time to fortify yourself against a storm is not when the storm is upon you. The time to decide your defenses in an attack is not when those slings and arrows are already hitting your fortress. You gotta do that ahead of time, right? Nobody who has repelled enemies, who has protected their peace, who has protected anything about their lives did so right in the exact moment. Or if they did, I bet you ask them after the fact, hey, what do you wish you could have done differently? Every single person, every single time will say, I wish I'd been more well fortified. I wish I'd thought about this before. I wish I'd had flood insurance. I wish I'd had a fence around my property. I wish I had locked my doors, right? So let's learn from that. You need to decide your strategy in a time of neutrality. Now, sure, he's probably already done something. Talk shit about you to the rest of the lacrosse team. Send some nasty text messages to your friends. Dropped off your stuff in a passive aggressive way outside your house. Meh. Threaten to let you not see the kids, okay? So you're, you're heated. This is why we need our friends, because they're gonna be that neutrality. They're gonna balance things out. Because when we're gassed up and we feel like someone's attacking us, again, we just wanna attack back. You're playing the long game, though. You're playing the long game. What does that mean, though? Playing the long game. We can kind of see what it means with like the queen of England, but with us, what is the long game? The long game is to get this bitch to leave you alone. Just leave me alone. That's all I want, you know? I always say though, I don't start fights, but I will finish them. That means 
I actually just want to be left alone. I don't want my ex knocking on my doors. I don't want trolls chirping me. I just, I just want to be left alone. I want to, I want people to be as engaged as I engage with them, right? I don't just send weird shit to my exes. They send it to me. It's like, all right, well now this is how it's going to be. I've actually got my mind, my mind map for you, my war flow chart. So always remember that the goal is peace. It is not victory. We talk about that a lot here on this channel. Peace versus victory. I was in Army ROTC and this was drilled into me. This is like military lesson 101 that's so important. They give it to you in ROTC, which is basically like a Boy Scout troop with guns. Like they're trying to make the military seem as enticing as possible. Like you're really not doing anything like that bad or that scary. I fucking loved it. It changed my life. And I did not join the military. You're welcome, America. Like <laughs> you're welcome that I'm not on the front lines defending you. I the grease paint, it clogged my pores. I, God bless the military. I'm just not strong enough to do it. But I still got some lessons out of there. When you engage with someone, you have to ask yourself, first of all, what's their goal? Is it peace or is it victory? If your opponent wants peace, hey, we both say we own this river. How are we going to figure that out? If two people want peace, there's usually a lot of different avenues to get there. But if your opponent wants victory, that's not good because you can come to them heart to heart, kind of, kind of, they're not going to respond like that. And therefore you have to ask yourself what you want. I want you to want peace. Yes, of course you want victory. Of course you want victory. Okay. The true victory is that this person is out of your life. Rihanna famously said, I have no need for revenge. I'm no longer his and that's punishment enough. What? could hurt your ex-boyfriend more than not giving a shit about him. Can you imagine how Kanye would feel if when he's like, you can talk to me through my security, and instead of being like, are you fucking kidding me? You petty bitch, how can you do this? What is wrong with you? Instead of reacting like that, because that's exactly what he wanted, he wanted her to plug back in. This was how he got his hooks on her and got her to turn around and reorient to him, giving him attention. Because so many people do not know or care about the difference between positive and negative attention, right? They just don't care. They just want it. Kanye is a classic narcissist. So of course, those people above all others just want attention. Can you imagine though, how it would clip his wings if she turned out and she's like, great, oh my God, thank you. That's like, I would love to just talk security. Good luck. Called his bluff like that. I recently dealt with someone who we had dated and broken up and he like, he was like, let's just make some plans to see each other in a few months and see where we stand. And I was like, okay. You know, I just, at the time I did not want to do that. I don't, I don't know how I felt about it, but I was like, okay, fine. He texted me out of the blue. He's like, I don't want to see you anymore. And I know he expected me to be like, what, why are you okay? What happened? Why not? And I, I, I wrote a whole paragraph. I wrote that whole, this is like the meme. I wrote the whole paragraph. Bah, 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 bah. And my friend's like, let me handle this for you. She deleted the whole thing and she's like, you write back two letters. Okay, send. That's exactly what I sent. I was like, okay. That's a response, but also not a response. It's a response, but it is not taking the bait. And what is harder than that? Didn't I wanna just write that whole long paragraph and blah, here's every emotion I have about this, right? I did it. I wrote back, okay, and his head popped. He sent me this huge long thing because I basically called his bluff, right? And then he felt sorry. Like it was, it would just became, ugh, oh, it just became such a hurtful, awful mess. But I digress. It's neither here nor there. The point is, it took a lot of restraint to only write that one word rather than just here's the entire contents of my head and my heart and my stomach and over and over and over again. But it clipped the wings of that manipulation. And next time he tries to do something like that, send me this, what I interpreted as a very dramatic, unnecessary text when it could have been like, hey, you know, I've been thinking about it. It's probably not a good idea that we meet up. I would have been like, okay, you know what? I totally understand that whatever you think is healthiest for you. Had he come to me in a way that was more mature and communicative, I would have responded in kind, right? But that's not how I was approached. And so I wasn't going to give a thoughtful cognitive response either. I was going to give two letters. And so the next time he's like, I'm going to send her a dramatic text. I bet he's going to think twice because he's going to be like, 
well, she didn't, she didn't exactly respond the way I wanted her to. So maybe instead of doing something dramatic, maybe I'll, maybe I'll send that mature and communicative text. We can now shape someone's behavior based on our reaction or rather our non-reaction. But what if they're doing stuff online, posting things, blah, blah, blah. Every storm runs out of rain, right? Every person eventually burns themselves out when they're not getting a response from you. Look at like a toddler, look at a dog. They bark and bark and bark. They want that sandwich. You can get me the sandwich, 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 sandwich. That's how my dog is, sandwich, 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 sandwich. And he knows though, a hundred times out of a hundred, he's not getting the sandwich. I put him outside, I turn around. And so now his little sandwich tantrums precipitously drop. He used to bark 15 times, then it was 10. Now it's, now it's five, he's only barking five times at the sandwich. And now he just looks, he's like, oh. He's learned that my non-reaction is the consistent party line, right? How different are people than dogs? I mean, when you think about it, you know, especially boys and especially dramatic exes. If 100 times out of 100, I'm not responding to this. You can tag me in whatever bitchy photos you want. You can comment ew on all my selfies. I'm just gonna block you. I'm not gonna respond. I'm going to move on. It's not about looking unbothered because of course these things bother you and you have the right to go home and like wanna tear your hair out and scream in your bathroom for 15 minutes and cry to your friends but they don't get to see that. They don't get to see that because all that does is fuel them. I have learned this the hard way. I have taken that bait. I have raged right back at someone and believe me, when I get going, oof, ugh, you don't wanna do that. But for someone who wants your attention, like I said, they don't care if it's positive or negative. And you know what? We've been in that state too, haven't we? Where it's like, I just want him to react, I just want something from him. I know we said our party line typically is non-reaction, but if you think, hey, this isn't slowing down, or if it seems like they need something from you, like some sort of conversation, ugh, okay, you can go to them and be like, those 35 calls last night, those are not acceptable. Those are not acceptable, Michael. Okay, do you need something from me? I'm going to give you the next three minutes of my time and you can ask me questions about our breakup and we can try to have a conversation. After that, you do not contact me again. You don't tag me in hateful memes. You don't talk to me nor about me to my friends. Do you understand this? This is the deal that we're making, okay? Come to them, be like, hey, you can, you can make it nice. You can be like, look, I can see that you're hurting. I don't want you to hurt. If there's something you feel like you need to say or answers you need, Fine, let's have that conversation, but we're having that conversation once. It ends, you know, when I start to feel uncomfortable and that is what it is. We did a video recently on how to break up with someone in a way that like is effective and not harsh and traumatic for them. And one of the key points is you make statements. Everything you say doesn't have a period. I don't wanna be with you right now. I don't wanna be with you. This is not a negotiation. You come to the table with clear mind, no, this is not a rash decision that I've made. I've been thinking about it. I'm sorry. This is not a relationship I can be in anymore. Okay? We know that closure is kind of bullshit. Closure is bullshit. Closure is something you give to yourself, right? One of my guy friends was dealing with an insane, deranged ex, and she just keeps calling him and manipulating him because she wants, I need closure, I need closure. I was like, there is no more closure to give her. You don't like her. You don't like her. You're not in love with her. You only date her because you were bored. And okay, you've learned not to do that because it fucks with people's emotions. It creates so many more problems than just like, you could have gone out and gotten a random blowjob. You didn't have to fully date this bitch. But look, what are you gonna say to her? Exactly that. Hey, uh, I sort of called you piggy face behind your back and I never was really into you and I'm sorry I strung you along. Of course you're not gonna say that. It's mean, it's harsh, it's gonna create more problems than it solves. There is nothing you can say to her. And every woman, if we're being honest with ourselves, when we say we need closure from an ex, what we actually want is to give them one more chance to talk us back into this relationship. Please give me one more chance 
Please talk me back in to your fuckboy behavior. Please allow me to keep buying front row seats to your circus, right? They want one more audience with the Pope, one more foot in the door. I don't allow that. I don't allow it. It's not healthy for anyone. Truly, the kindest thing you can do to someone you've broken up with, I don't mean someone who's ghosted. You know, you don't ghost people. Have that breakup conversation. Reference that in the, in the video. Feel free to look that up. But once you have like said your piece, you move on. You have to block them if necessary. Change your phone number. Keep moving forward. They need to know that you are a block of ice. And that sucks. We, Because we don't like when people do that to us. But sometimes if we're being honest, like I said, we look back and I need closure from you. It, it's not that. It's not that. It's a manipulation. It's desperation. It's please let me back in your life. I just want one more conversation with you because I miss you. I'm going to try to somehow wheedle this so you're apologizing to me. Then I can forgive you. And oh my gosh, should we get back together? No. It's just not healthy. So to recap, break up with someone in a respectful way. Be the dump or you would want as a dumpy, right? Have something relevant to say. Make it a clean break. So much of the time when we look back on like our most traumatic, painful breakups, it's not the conversation that was so bad, it's the shredding. It's, well, he ghosted me, but now he's back and he's in and out of my life. He says he doesn't want a girlfriend, but he wants to keep having sex. It's the non, it's the non-compliance between thoughts and actions, right? He says he doesn't want this, so why are we hooking up? He says he does want to be my boyfriend, but then he won't call me for two weeks. He's my husband, but he's changed his fucking phone number, right? That's what makes us crazy. Don't give that to someone else. Give them something as respectful as you would want. And know that once you have done that, though, you have the right to move on. Make that war flow chart. And ask your friends, hey, I've picked this, that, and this as behaviors that warrant a response for me. Not a kind response. Hey, I see that you threatened to kill my sister. Do you just like want to get coffee? I feel like you're hurting and you need help. Uh, no, that's not the response. No, that's not the right one. But ask your friends, like, hey, what do you think of this? And ask them not, what do you think of this? What about these responses do you think will or will not get me closer to peacefulness? An absence of this drama in my life, right? That should be your objective. Because we gotta be honest with ourselves. Again, what do we want, peace or victory? Do we want to keep engaging? Do we like the drama? If you like the drama, girl, okay. I mean, you're gonna get what you paid for. But if you're here watching this video, Hopefully you don't. Drama's only fun for a little while. And when I look back on my life at the times when I was feeding into the most drama, it's because everything else in my life was completely flaccid and going nowhere. My career I wasn't really focusing on. My health was out of balance. I wasn't working out. I wasn't really, you know, I didn't craft like the friendships that I wanted. So I'm like, eee! I was like a cat playing with a ball of tinfoil, just a crow swooping in on something shiny, right? But once I got the rest of my life where I needed to be, where it is now, I look at dramatic boys and I'm like, ugh, ugh. I feel exhausted down to my very bone marrow. So look at things from a place of peace. Look at how you can cultivate that, first and foremost in a communicative way, and if not, how you can move on. I wanna know your thoughts on Kim and Kanye. Tell me what we should cover next. And like I said, find me on Instagram and find me on Flays. We've got a new video on Flays up tomorrow. Mwah!